Welcome to Comic Station, issue number 44 to October 30th, 2013. It's Halloween coming up tomorrow, Happy so... Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! And of course, Echo has her little prop. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring a gun or a grenade or anything dangerous this, this time, guys, although... Although she has been hitting us with that, so. Yes, I, I can do, do some good damage with this. Uh, my costume, if you don't know, I am Death of the Endless. And I am from the Court of Owls. But you can't hear me very well. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, nobody cares what I say. <laughs> and I'm the Spider Girl in my 2099 suit. Awesome. And we took one of the recommendations. Somebody wanted to see some statues. And this is Infinite Crisis. This is Nightmare Batman. And it's a big chunk. This is the size of a comic book. So yeah, very awesome. He's very awesome. Very, very creepy cool. details very on him. Spooky. And I thought it was perfect to bring out for the Halloween edition. Yeah, he looks a little, it's a little like, um, the, the rabbit from Donnie Darko, Frank. Yes. Mm. Yes. So, why don't we start off? I have Damien, son of Batman this week. Can you close? Um, this is what if, uh, Damien was never killed. So, basically, um, it gives you... Like a little bit of backstory of what would happen, like if he never got killed, and then why he eventually would become. I don't want to give spoilers, but eventually become Batman. Yeah, it's a little. Uh, it gives it away a little bit on the cover. I mean, it's no real surprise. It's, so. Yeah, I mean the title's a little bit obvious and everything, but it's cool. I like what ifs. It's an alternate it's little. Not Batman yet. But um, it it's thing? definitely good because I, if I wasn't reading it next to these two, I would have been crying. So it's definitely a good read. <laughs> if it almost makes me cry. All right, and that is a uh, is that a short run? Uh, it is one of four. Okay, so it is. Cool. I like short little comp uh, composed, so you can just grab them all you at know once, when and it's you don't. End. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to yeah. worry about your wallet being completely destroyed. Exactly. Yeah. The next one we have is Forever Evil Argus number one from DC Comics. Uh, this one really centers around Colonel Trevor, and it even starts off with a flashback with Colonel Trevor. He's meeting Diana, uh, Wonder Woman, and it continues the flashback from forth and their relationship. And then he wakes up and he finds that the Secret Society has destroyed the Justice League and all the heroes. So it's him adjusting to this. You also find out a little bit of that he was saved when the Justice League was attacked. He was with them, but he was sent away and given the message, Seek the Truth. And that's it. They kind of left him with Little that. Cryptic. So very cryptic as usual. So he has to hunt that down. Uh, there's only a handful of Argus uh, soldiers left, and their numbers are dwindling. As with for every evil, good guys are dying. In this five squares, this I am so excited. I have the pleasure mm -hmm. to introduce. Very appropriate. Yes, very appropriate. Sandman overtures number one. I got to read it before you did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so excited. really, really excited about this one. I was literally jumping up and down as I was reading this. Um, just so excited to see all of my favorite characters back, of course. Um, the setting of this is very Victorian looking when they are in their reality dreaming, wherever you might, as real as it gets in this one. Anyway, um, so you see, uh, of course, my death, not as I am right now, but in her kind of throwback costume with the long dress, Give a shout out to Alita, who is a cosplayer, if you want to see that look before you can look in the book. Take a look at her profile. Um, the art in this, of course, is amazing, really beautiful, um, holds true to the series. Um, the only thing, well, first let me say that Neil Gaiman said this, this is not my spoiler, one of the Endless does die in this book. And I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I do know. Uh, my favorite part about it was the big giant centerfold where they show you some absolutely amazing versions of some of the endless um, that you're going to see. I just was absolutely tickled and delighted to, to see this. The, my only complaint on it is that really absolutely nothing happens in this issue. It's really kind of just a recap and I wouldn't really know if I didn't you know know this series front and back and have it tattooed all over myself. I wouldn't know really what was going on or be very interested in it if I wasn't already interested in it. So that's it. She was jumping up and down I was. by the way. Oh. She was squealing. <laughs> um 
My second is Ultimate Comics C Cataclysm. Um, in this, uh, Vision, who is a, um, she's a bot, a robot, uh, created to, um, basically, uh, protect against the swarm. Um, she was just given the programming to feel emotions. Also, again, very sad, almost made me cry. Um, what are we doing I here? Don't wanna, <laughs> I, <laughs> it's a heart wrenching I don't want to give away the end, but Galactus is involved, so yes. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Snack time. My comic is Rex Zombie Killer from Big Dog. Inc. This is a continuation from a one-shot by the same name that came out earlier and enough fan support and everybody came through so they are doing a continued storyline. Uh, this is aimed toward the younger readers, however there is some violence as basically the storyline is the animals can talk. The, they're all talking to each other. It's very uh, homeward bound in that state. <laughs> and like homeward bound, they're trying to get to uh, shelter. Uh, the, the ones were kind of raised in a uh, scientific compound where they were experimented on and so forth, but they're all trying to get home. And cats, dogs, and gorillas. So Why not? This one group is being chased by another group of gorillas that are being chased by another group of pit bulls, and they all kind of don't like each other, but their common enemy is of course the zombies. And just to make it even more outlandish, on a whole level of why not, zombie animals, and yes. to sum it up, really, what better could you get than zombie grizzly bear? Mm. That is brutal. That is brutality to the utmost. It's still a little kiddish, but it's, <laughs> it, it's fun. It's a little um, entertaining. It's entertaining, so. Don't be fooled by the cuteness on this one, that there's definitely <laughs> some mature content going on in yes, Zombie Tramp, which is my next comic for today. Uh, definitely enjoyed this very quick read. It was fun. Opens up with absolutely naked, banging body, gorgeous, dead zombie chick. Um, there's some guys that come into her haunted house and they're heckling her and she rips them to pieces. Definitely recommend this to any lady cosplayers who like to go to cons dressed half naked. I think you'll get a, a lot of uh, joy Ooh. out of the women empowerment in this. Um, <laughs> she's also got a tiny, um, tiny redhead sidekick. That's something I can relate to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like I said, don't be fooled. There's a lot of gore. There's a lot of adult content, a lot of violence in this. Um, definitely a lot of sex. So it was, it was fun. Weird thing about it was that they gave you the story that was quick and short, and then the second half of the comic was them actually retelling you her origins, and I thought that was kind of weird and not that really necessary. Weird. So, But more naked zombie chicks. Yeah, you can't beat naked zombie chicks. All right. No. All right, and now we have a number of reviews, con including a very special one by a guest writer. The first review from Lido is actually Hellboy Midnight Circus number one from Dark Horse Comics. This came out last week but it's appropriate for Halloween. Uh, really, it's center, centered around Hellboy and more of his childhood when he was being raised. This is more of his rebellious youth as he sneaks out and he finds a nighttime circus. The artwork is very pulpy and atmospheric, which is perfect for this. I really enjoyed the artwork in this comic as well. Lido says in his review uh, that Hellboy Midnight Circus creates an immersive and dreamlike atmosphere that pulls you into the bizarre, unsettling world it creates for a great journey that skirts the thin line between dream and nightmare. I have Itty Bitty Hellboy. Um, he said, um, well, this isn't a quote, sorry. All ages and cartoonish adaptation uh, among the likes of Baby Looney Tunes show. Um, He's, he did say it is something of a miracle in its own right, uh, taking secondary adaptations of characters, removes them from their world style and tone, yet remains uncluttered. Uh, it's a refreshing change of pace with characters that you love. It's a really... Adorable. We did a, so uh, we did a review with like the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, a while ago, and it's really cute, very, very, uh, very cute. looks almost like... I think like, that's why they put it in my hands. Absolutely, she's the cute one. <laughs> so, it looks very, uh, like, pencil drawn and everything, so yeah. it, it would be perfect, and 
Uh, Baby Looney Tunes is perfect because it just takes the characters and takes them out of their world and puts them into a childhood. Mm -hmm. Definitely an all ages read. And you don't have to read Hellboy or know anything about those to get into this. Still adorable. Still fun. The next one we have is Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and the Red Death. This is an adaptation of Edgar Allan Poe's works. So I'm not really going to go on the storyline because most people you should know, know this and it's easy to find. If you don't, it's Halloween. Figure it out. Absolutely. These are perfect, quintessential Halloween readings. And in this adaptation, Leto really liked Corbin's work, the uh, author and everybody that works on this. And matter of fact, the one quote that I have to read to sum this entire thing up is Corbin offers a unique new take on old stories that really present them in new and interesting light, all smothered in layers of great atmosphere. It's a chilling, macabre read. Halloween reading written all over it. Sounds perfect. Definitely. And drumroll, <laughs> our special guest reviewer is... Ah, it's me! <laughs> Actually picked up... Um, picked up this title of Ash and the Army of Darkness, which is um, following the announcement of the sequel that Bruce Campbell has made is going to come out. He's going to work with Remy again and bring to the screen a new Army of Darkness. Um, so this book, really exciting to get into. Um, it's written by Niles. I definitely love the look of it. The oversaturated color is great. Um, it starts off a little bit slow, just kind of reiterating the last three and a half minutes of the movie or so. However, there's not as much of the action and the camp that I really enjoy about the movie. Um, is this going to follow? It does flow really nicely from old story to new story. I'm wondering, is this the same plot line that the movie is going to follow? We'll have to wait or, and find yeah. out. Um, you know, because the writers obviously are going to be different on the book than they are going to be on the movie. Uh, but who knows what kind of secrets they have in store for us. I'm very excited to find out. Yeah. Uh, did try to do a little bit too much for just a number one that came out. They had to recap the movie. They had to make a new story and try to pack in all of the action that things that have and Bruce the campy Campbell, humor and, and the campy humor like it's just it's it would be impossible to pack that all into you can't combine Bruce Campbell into one little medium no you can't <laughs> um, the one thing I did find really hilarious was the update of the cute co-worker who was yes. totally 80s in the movie and now has this like updated look I thought it was really funny that that they did that um, but Overall, um, definitely, like I say in the review, pumped like a boomstick for this to come out. I, I just like Sandman that I reviewed earlier, something that I've personally been waiting and ha I'm really, really passionate about. So um, can't wait to see what they bring. Hopefully uh, the twos and threes and everything that follow in this will be a little bit, a little bit crazier. Um, and I'd like to see a little bit more gore. Yeah, it's a cult classic, so there, you're going to have a lot of people interested in that just on its name alone. The last one we have for the reviews this week is The True Lies of the Fabulous Killjoys number 5, aka Killjoys. A lot of people just summarize it. This is from Dark Horse Comics, and it's, if you haven't been keeping up with it, it's a post-apocalyptic grunge western. A uh, little psychedelic, a little futuristic mixed in as well. And summing it up, basically, if you've been reading it, you're going to want to pick this issue up. If you haven't, you're going to want to go read back on the previous issues and maybe pick up this issue with number six because this one is kind of filling in gaps a little bit. Uh, Lito wasn't overly impressed by what happened in this issue and more set up for the next one. So not necessarily necessary read right now but it'll be good to pick up with the next issue. We also have two more reviews coming out later in the week. The Last of Us trade paperback which collects all the Last of Us comics as well as King Conan Hour of the Dragon number six and if you've been missing Leto's a little bit scathing reviews lately, uh, don't, you won't be disappointed. So, <laughs> those are our reviews for this week for October 30th, 2013. And, oh, as always, you can check out the full-length interviews on Front Toward Gamer. Yep, and feel free, leave us comments. Like, we have this wonderful statue up here, as we can show everybody, thanks to one of our watchers, one of our viewers, uh, <laughs> suggesting it, as well as, yes, it's Halloween and we decided to do a little dress up. As the guy, I get to cheat a little bit. Very simple. <laughs> so, 
We but wish you nobody's all. here to see me. So. <laughs> we want to wish you all a safe and happy Halloween. And if you don't have a costume, just dress up because it's fun. Absolutely. And come on, as simple as just wearing a suit, you're dressed up. Get a and little hat. mask. All you need is an owl mask. Owl mask. It's, it's, very, it's very, very nice. It you is. You should buy one. Yes, I like it. I actually already had the book, but I wanted to get it because it had the mask. So, thank you very much. Again, leave any comments. I've been trying to go in and uh, respond to people. I hope people have been liking that. And keep in contact. Mm -hmm. And we will see you next week. Keep the week. comments coming. We love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween.